Welcome to the Acts 29 podcast. Acts 29 is an organization and global network of churches that exist to plant churches worldwide. Now here's your host, Vice President of Acts 29 Church Planting, Dr. Adam Flint. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Acts 29 podcast. I am here with some of the leadership team. So here's Brian Howard, president of Acts 29, and Tyler Jones, who leads all of our hub church work. And then we have Justin Anderson, who leads our church's division. And then I'm Adam Flint, and I oversee our church planning. So we thought we'd kick off the podcast, the season of the podcast, talking about um, the direction of Acts 29 and kind of just getting an update of what's happening in each of these areas and all that. So thought we'd start, Brian, with you of just, if somebody walks up and says, what is Acts 29? What, what is Acts 29? What do, we, what do we do? What are we about? Who are we? It's a great question, and I am asked that question <laughs> fairly regularly. So Acts 29 essentially is a global network of churches that's joined together by three things. So relationship, theological alignment, and church planning. So let me unpack those just briefly. So when I say relationship, like we we collaborate relationally to see the Great Commission go forward. So we're planting churches together and we're helping grow in our effectiveness as churches together. So, But we're doing that in close relationship with each other. And so we have Lots of opportunities where we're connected in cohorts and we're connected in training things and spending lots of time together as we collaborate. The second thing, theological alignment. We do have a particular theological persuasion, and in that, our churches and our church planters are theologically aligned, and so we're joined around that as well. And then lastly, we're over 25 years old now, Acts 29 is, and and as you guys know, church planting is a big deal to us. We've planted many, many churches, been involved in many churches. I believe we're currently in 47 countries where we're actively planting mm-hmm. churches. You might be listening to this or watching this today, and you might have planted an Acts 29 church or be interested in planting an Acts 29 church. But when you wrap that all up, um, a global organization and network joined together by theological alignment relational collabor- collaboration, and church planting. So what do you, okay, so you just said organization and network. That could feel redundant. What do you mean when you say we're an organization and a network? Why not just say we're a network well, or an organization? The reason we say that is there is a, we are, we are organized, Acts 29 is, we are an actual physical organization. We're in our office here. We have a, a large staff team. We have employees all over the world. And then, we also are a network of churches, so the organization essentially keeps the mission moving forward and supports this network of churches that is collaborating together. So there's a sense where it's a two, you know, sometimes we think of it as sort of small circle and large circle, and we're not sure where the circles go, you know, all the time, but but we are an organization in that we're a fairly large, you know, forward-moving, organized, have a clear strategic plan and mission statement. But also, you may be out there, and you may be listening to this podcast today or watching it. You may be out there and say, hey, I'm a part of a local church. You're a part of a of a network of like-minded churches and we're who are theologically aligned, who are relationally connected, and we care about church planning. So there's a sense where it's a two sort of – where where, where where it's two things if you look at it like that. Yeah. So you've been talking a lot about that we want – to have more churches and better churches as a way of just kind of shorthand describing what we're doing in Acts 29. Can you unpack what you mean when you say more churches and better churches? Yeah, so by more churches, we probably all understand that what we mean is is we, you know, all of us at this table have planted churches. You, you probably listening or watching this have been a part of a church plant. Maybe you planted a church, thinking about planting a church. We believe that we need more churches. We need more churches where I live in California and more churches where you live in Florida and more churches where you live in North Carolina. Justin and I both live in the greater Los Angeles uh, area, Southern California. And so we need more churches. And so we're planting churches in Brazil and in Latin America and in in Europe and in Southeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand. So we are definitely about more churches, but we're also about better churches. Now, what I mean by better is essentially 
more effective. Better is a, you know, maybe a shortened way to say we want to be effective missionally. We want to be effective in discipleship. We we want to be effective in multiplying. We want to be effective at reaching our communities, at being hospitable. And so what I mean by better is we we yes, we exist to see more churches planted. We also exist to help you be more effective at reaching your community. So that's why we use this sort of slogan or tagline of more churches and better churches. We need more churches? Definitely. Please be a part of that through giving financially, through raising up church planners. We have all kinds of activity going and things with church planning. And then we want you to focus on also being an effective church, which does include multiplication, the making of disciples, seeing conversions, evangelism, being hospitable, teaching the Bible faithfully. All of that is a part of better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so when you hear, okay, we're an organization, a network, standing on those kind of three legs of the stool, and we want to be more churches and better churches. How's how's that happening in the part of Acts 29 that you're leading? So one would be just tell us a little bit about that area, the church's division, yeah. what that is. And then what is that looking like now? Yeah. Yeah. So the church's division, uh, you know, some year, maybe a year or two ago, we separated uh, all of the Acts 29 network into a couple of different divisions, right? Church planting, churches, and hub churches. And so the church's division is kind of all the churches that are no longer church plants, you know, five yep. years or so since launch, self-sustaining, self-governing, those kinds of things, but maybe haven't yet hit the hub church, you know, kind of level. Um, and so it's churches from, you know, 50 people, you know, that in, in small towns to nearly a thousand people, you know, in some of our larger churches. So it's really broad and, and spans the whole country. So, uh, it's kind of the, the little bit of everything division, you know, mm-hmm. where there's a lot of differences. So the, the more and better is kind of interesting. Brian, I think spoke to this with the, we're an organization and a network. I think where the rubber hits the road on that. And especially so in my division is when people go, well, Acts 29 does this, or Acts 29 is this, where you go, well, what do you mean by that? Like, because right. when I say that, you, you you could mean like, well, the central staff of Acts 29 is, is organizing these things. Like you with your church planting team with Zach Morgan and Tyler Powell, you guys are doing things. But then there's this broader sense in which we go, uh, well, the churches of Acts 29, our, that is the network, they are doing things. So when we say Acts 29 plants churches, what do we mean by that? Do we mean the organization or do we mean the network? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yes, that is, we do that together. Right. And I know we hate to use church illustrations, you know, with Acts 29, because they're not the same thing. Acts 29 is not a church. But when someone says vintage church does this in Raleigh, North Carolina, well, what do they mean? Do they mean you know, Tyler and his elders and his team, or do they mean the people of vintage yeah. church? Right. Mm-hmm. And the answer is yes, that, yes, that is what's happening. And so in the church's division, I think we are, we, we've built out this regional structure with regional directors and sub-regional directors and area leads and PCPs and wife support and all this stuff, this infrastructure that in many ways our, you know, organization uh, puts together and, and uh, administers, but it's led by, network churches. And it depends on our network churches being bought into what we're trying to accomplish. So all of our regional directors are lead pastors of Acts 29 churches. All of our sub-regional directors are lead mm-hmm. pastors of Acts 29 churches. So it's this overlapping sense of like, we have to do this collaboratively and not only church to church, but organization to network. It all has to work together if it's going to work at all. Sure. So in that Churches division with regional, that's whole structure, sub-regional structure. What's going on? Kind of what's happened? Give us a little bit of like an update of what you've been up to over the last handful of months. And then as you kind of look out into the fall and go, man, I'm super excited because this is going to be happening or it's been happening and we're doing more of that stuff. Yeah. Well, one of the challenges I think we always face as a network. And, you know, I've been around the network for almost 25 years and there's always been the sense of like, how do we best organize ourselves, you know, in light of the fact that we are a global network, but even, you know, the U S is, is my purview, our purview here. Like how do we organize 
400 or so churches spread out over an entire continent uh, that that are loosely connected, sometimes tightly connected, trying to get them to work together, to give money to things, to raise God. I mean, there's just so much complexity yep. to what we're doing. So, so because of that, there's been a lot of different iterations of how we structure ourselves and interact with each other. And so what we've done over the last year or so is kind of reconvene our five U.S. regions, which has been a a thing in the past that I think worked really well. We reconvene those five regions without losing what was our regions. The 16 regions are now subregions. So it can get a little complicated when you try to describe it, but it makes sense on a map. And so what we've done is get leaders in place that are clear about their jobs. So regional directors are meant to catalyze collaborative church planting. That's their job description, yep. right? That's the top line on every job description, catalyze collaborative church planning. And then the sub-regional directors who have you know, a smaller scope of responsibility, fewer churches, more hands-on, on-the-ground kind of contact, their job is to coordinate collaborative church planting. Mm-hmm. And so now everybody knows my job is to catalyze, your job is to coordinate, area leads are convening church planters together, PCP's nice wife support. Of support. Of I know, super, I didn't even grow up Baptist. Ba- I, know. Yeah. I didn't, job. I'm not the son of a Baptist or anything. I, it's just, I'm a Careful. natural yeah, literator. Just, oof, I'm just, so, it's just a gift. So creative. It's a gift. Um, so yeah, so we're catalyzing, coordinating, convening, caring, and then cohorts, you know, are our coaching mechanism, right? So what we've accomplished is getting really good leaders in all of those positions. We have one sub-regional director still to hire in the, in California of all places. Um, we're on the cusp of that, but we've got the structure in place. We've got great leaders in place who understand what they're supposed to be doing and are pushing the mission forward. So if let's say I'm a guy who wants to plant a church, like I'm not in Acts 29 or maybe I'm going, I'm inside an Acts 29 church, or maybe I'm a church that's wants to plant churches and wants to be a part of Acts 29, how do they, like, how do they find their way into that structure? Yeah. Or, or do they? Yeah. Or do they come another way or how well, the, does all that kind of facilitate all yeah, that? Yeah. The best way is to come through an Acts 29 church, right? Like to be connected in Acts 29 church. And that's why we're, you know, you yep. guys are building pipelines and, and the, the, there's like a, a front door where it's like, we got a young guy in an Acts 29 church and he, you know, expresses interest and in, in all of that. If you're outside of Acts 29 and interested in, in the idea of church planning, I would go to Acts 29.com. Go find a church near you, knock on that door and say, hey, I want to plant a church. I'm interested in yep. planting a church and I think I like Acts 29. Or email me, justin.anderson <laughs> at acts and I'll get you connected. But yeah, we it's got to be collaborative. It's got to be local church driven and and kind of catalyzed and coordinated by our staff, but it's local church driven. So go find an Acts 29 church in your area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, okay, so what if I am an Acts 29 church? And I'm, I'm in it because I want to plant churches. I want to work collaboratively and all that stuff. It, but I just don't, maybe I don't have a church planner or I want to support church planning. Is it, is that the structure? Yes. Like, absolutely. So who do I go talk to? Your sub-regional director would be the first point of contact because again, they're the ones coordinating collaborative church planting. And I, what I love about that idea of collaborative church planting is I may have a church planner and you have money and you have a pulpit I could borrow every six weeks or so, and you have, you know, expertise in some area that I don't have. And collaboratively, we can produce a church planner together, right? So maybe I have money, maybe I have a planter, maybe I have opportunities, whatever I have, the four of us could work together to plan a church. Yep. And that's the job of the sub-regional director to, to work with your team, the church planning team, to know who in my sub-region is on, in the pipeline on their way up, what do they need, and how can I coordinate the other churches in my subregion to work together to produce a church yep. planner? Yep, awesome, great. What's happening in Hub Church world? What is just first of all, what is Hub Churches? Yeah, and, and I want to pause just for a second. Like I, I'm really encouraged by the conversation so far. Uh, it, it feels like for 25 years the primary thing that we've had going is the Holy Spirit, which I'm, I'm, you know, that's the best thing. But we haven't had as compelling a vision as Brian just gave. We certainly hadn't had the structure that Justin has proposed, and it's, it's not just a future structure; it's a current structure that's working well already. Yeah. And so if, if we just continue to work together, collaborate, uh, we're going to plant a lot of churches. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm really excited about that. So I just didn't want to let that minute, that moment pass. I think it's really important. Um, 
for as long as Acts 29 has been in existence, we've had these great churches all over the country, uh, sometimes in cities, sometimes in suburbs, sometimes just regional churches uh, that the Lord has blessed and they've grown pretty significantly. And uh, these, these churches are led by humble men and women. And uh, they've been very gracious with their resources. So they, they're willing to host events. Uh, they fund other churches at a higher rate, mm-hmm. typically. Um, they give their resources away. They, they use some of the influence that they have to help other, other churches get started and going. And uh, Acts 29 has ridden their back for a long time. And um, we're real grateful for that opportunity. And so uh, Brian and, and some of us were together thinking, what can we do to get these churches together, fuel these churches, and see if we can really um, multiply the, the planting opportunities? And so the Hub Church Division was born out of that. Uh, how can we come beside these churches and fuel the ministry that, that's going on with them? And so it's a little bit artistic how we come up with a Hub Church. They're not real hard numbers. Uh, they're more some boundaries for us to play in. And so typically a hub church is over a thousand people. Um, typically their their budget allows them to give um, faithfully to Acts 29. It's, it's 2 million or more is kind of the, the number that we look at. It's not always hard fix there, but uh, we, we look for church planting history. So we're not interested in churches that are just trying to be large organizations or large pulpits, but we're trying to go and find Acts 29 churches that have planted and planted again. We have multiple hub churches that have granddaughter uh, church plants, you know, that, that's, that's significant for us. And then we're trying to find churches that have some influence and are willing to use that influence to advance the kingdom and plant churches. And so uh, that, that's kind of the, the artistic pot that we look at as we pull hub churches into to this division. So why, like, why carve out those churches that are larger in doing those things? Is it I mean, somebody would go, so is this just special treatment yeah. or why, why is it a benefit to them? Why is it a benefit to the churches? Why is it, mm-hmm. how does that help church planners? Like why do that? Yeah. And, and questions like that are really important. I mean, it's a direct question and we should ask that question. We should have good answers for it. And so I, I'm really glad that you asked that. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, the way that you interact with a, a four-year-old is really important that it's within that life stage. And their needs are a lot different than what an 18-year-old yeah. might be. Um, and, and that's that's similar to hub churches, that they've grown to a size where their their needs are different than a church plant or a church that might be 200 people. And we haven't had the resources or the ability to come beside those churches and help. And so we don't look at it as a elitist thing or a special treatment thing. Yeah, we, we see it as the network is coming beside, like we do church plants in the church division and offering them the same opportunities to develop, grow, have value in, in the network. And so uh, I think it's it's probably like this, maybe to use a church example like, like Justin did. You wouldn't uh, work with a community group leader, a small group leader, the same way you'd work with a drummer. Uh, everybody would immediately say, no, those are two very different things. And a church plant and a hub church are just two very different things. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's a way of serving not only larger church guys, but also the church planner. Like, yeah. A church planner can be really inspired by somebody like Matt or Ryan Kwan or somebody like that that's leading a big church. And that inspiration is great. But the questions they're asking and the things they're dealing with are so completely different in a lot of ways, like kind of down in, mm. and they just need different things at different yeah. times. And so it actually isn't really super helpful to the guy who's trying to gather a core team to be asking about how you how you have an HR department. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? like yeah, that just yeah. doesn't it sounds nice, but it's just not helpful to yeah. him. Also, it, you know, it gives us the opportunity to serve those different groups of people more effectively than if we were trying to serve everybody together. Right. So when you think about it, for many, many years, we really focused all of our efforts just on an Acts 29 member. You know, and an Acts 29 member was somebody who had been through assessment and was now leading an Acts 29 church. And you might be two years in, 10 years in, 20 years in, Mm -hmm. and we're doing generally the same thing. We're sort of, we're doing the same conference for you. We're doing everything the same. Whereas we, we have, we have churches of 60 people. And, you know, my dad pastored a church of a hundred people for around that space for most of my life. So I grew up in a small church, loved the small church, have ministered, have been a part of a rural church and an urban church. And then, you know, if you've been a part of a mega church, and I've served on teams at mega churches, 
it's such a different thing. We have yeah. one mega church that's planted over 600 churches, the church yeah. that Adam has been a part of for so long, Church of the 1122. And we have other churches who are trying to figure out what their ch- first church plant might look like, or how do we even get involved in church planting? We're maybe giving some money, but we don't even know how to start. And, allow, and, and looking at these three different sort of, we've got church planters, we have Acts 29 churches, we have Acts 29 hub churches. Now, one hub church pastor said, am I supposed to go tell our people that we're a hub church? I said, no, tell them you're an Acts 29 church. Sure. But we're just basically saying, how can we serve each of these groups most effectively, the four-year-old, the 18-year-old, the 11-year-old? Uh, and it's it's allowed us to serve each one of those groups more effectively than we were any of them before. Yeah, we can help them be better in the specific ways they need to be better and yeah. not just assume, well, you're all a church. So every discussion applies equally. Exactly. Yeah, and it should be real encouraging to the network uh, because we, we are not neglecting church plants or the church division. We are simply becoming more robust as we now are able to walk with hub churches as well. So, so we're, we're maturing as a network. We're caring for, for the, the totality of the network. And that's a good thing. You know, I hope that we can all celebrate, um, the, the development that each one of us are talking about. Mm-hmm. Cause you're doing a lot with, with church planting, right? Sure. Like well, tell us something about the church planting division. Yeah. And we can talk about that before we get there though. Like it, the other side of it is, you can have a like, hey, we need this from you or we expect this from you, a different discussion with churches that are 500 people and 10 years old or churches that are 5,000 than you can with somebody that's 50. And yeah. so I think yeah. that allows you to just nuance the discussion yeah. a little bit. Well, too. and that's the flip side of the hub church thing is we're asking a lot of those guys, mm-hmm. you know, to be, you know, give right. up their, their resources, like to open up their buildings and to be present and speak at things yep. and, and to coach guys. And like, yeah. we're asking a lot of those guys. Yeah. I it, Something Brian said reminded me when I was a 25 year old church planter, I remember hearing from a large church guy that I needed to have a 15 inch MacBook pro, a full-time male assistant at like this long, list and I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to get out of my parents' living room right now. Like I got nine people in my core group and I'm related to most of them. You know, like it's just a totally different thing. So when you're a church planner, like you need to be talking about church planner stuff, not mega church stuff. Right. Okay. So before we jump into church planning stuff, what's going on, what's been going on in Hub Church World? Again, if you're not in Acts 29 and Mm -hmm. you're a big church and you're thinking, well, Maybe I'll just do church planning by myself or I'll be better by myself. Like what's been happening in the hub church world that goes, come on in. Yeah, a couple, a couple things there. You know, if you are a large church and you feel like the three things that Brian spoke about, um, relational connection, theological alignment, and, and a desire to church plant, like we're, we're the best place to be. Like come and join us. We'd love to make that yeah. process easy and, and pull you in. Um, so, so it's starting a new thing. The hub church division didn't exist. And so it, it's a little bit like creating a church plan or starting a, a new organization. So we're, we're trying to do base level stuff at the beginning. Uh, most of the hub church guys didn't know each other. Uh, they're all over the, the country. Mm-hmm. And if relational capital and, and relational connections important to us, I need to make sure that these guys are starting to develop relationship with each other. That'll benefit us later in church planting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm trying to do as many things as possible. Uh, town halls, uh, cohorts, uh, events where 12 to 15 hub church guys are, are coming to. And, and one of the desires is to develop relationship. So we're eating together. Uh, we're trying to spend a lot of time together. Yeah. Uh, the, the next thing that we're working on is actual development for their churches, uh, which is a little tricky, but a lot of fun because these, these churches have connections and most of the things that they need, they can, they can go and get. Uh, and so I'm trying to make sure that we are connecting with some of the best thinkers and leaders and pastors in the country and sitting down in a room with them in, in a small kind of learning lab and allowing them to ask direct questions about their context. So it's it's very different than a conference where lots of people are hearing the same thing. You're, you're asking direct questions and so uh, have gotten a lot of traction in, in things like that. And then we're trying to think a little bit outside of the box. Like, how do we offer value to these churches? Uh, so, so Brian has developed a 403B9 with a, a, a local uh, accounting company, a finance company, uh, so we can benefit retirement. Yeah. We uh, are under retainer with some attorneys. 
Um, these churches are complex and they deal with very difficult issues. And so we're now able to offer legal advice uh, directly to their context. You know, just uh, things like that, that layer a couple of things on top of each other, development, value, camaraderie. Um, and I think that we're going to see in the next couple of years, uh, the end goal, which is this, we want to fuel their their mission. Uh, we'd like to see it just multiply, uh, where they're planting more churches, where we're getting some of our, our church planters in front of them. Three or four hub churches are coming in together, funding a church planter. Uh, they no longer have to worry about funding, and, and these hub churches get to coach the, the the church planter. And so I think we'll we'll drive this to the very end, which our end goal is uh, make disciples through planting churches. Yeah. And I think some of that too, like the 403B and the legal stuff, and even like the ECFA certification that you worked really hard on, like that's helping guys in the church's division because mm-hmm. they don't have to recreate mm-hmm. a retirement plan. They don't, or a church planner can come up under, you know, our nonprofit mm-hmm. status, 501c3 yeah. status. So there's some of that stuff that's, may start in one area or another, like cohorts kind of started in your division mm-hmm. and now it's worked its way into others. So there's even like the way it's helping one division to another yeah. and not sticking around in this places. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I got pretty eager. I just wanted to hear about some church planning division <laughs> stuff. Uh, so, so I'm going to transition back. Uh, you're, you're doing an amazing job with church planning. Tell, tell us Thanks what's going on. Yeah. So we, about a year ago, when I came into this role, which is hard to believe it's been almost a year it's now. fast. So, yeah. Um, we we looked, and Brian and I talked about this, which was Acts 29 has been around for 25 years, and by God's grace, it's been a really great 25 years. I mean, we have, I think there's close to, we've assessed close to 1,300 wow. church planners in that time. The, the success rate has been astounding. Like, um, and so God's just moved in incredible ways. But when we talked about it, it was like, okay, well, you can't just assume and presume on the Lord that because he did something for 25 years that he's going to do it again. Yeah. And stuff's just shifted. It's different, not just different in Acts 29. It's different across the United States. It's different across the globe than it was 10, 15, 25 years ago. And so, We sat down and asked, what does it look like for a young guy who wants to plant a church or somebody who's a pastor and identifies somebody that they think, well, maybe that guy has it. How do you, how do you get that guy who maybe is like a medical sales rep in his church or a youth pastor or something like that? How do you get that guy to self sufficient, self governing, Mm -hmm. the ability to be self replicating, you know, which is, where you guys are working with people. How do you like how do you do that? Cuz you can't just say I want to plant a church and then maybe it happens. Mm-hmm. Um and so we began to look at the a pipeline and just drawn out a pipeline. And so one of the things is that identifying recruiting and then training and then assessment and then coaching and cohorts so that one of the couple things that we've been doing is the cohorts and the coaching that happens after assessment is now if you go through assessment, you you do not plant alone. Like you come out of assessment and everybody that comes out of assessment is going into a cohort with guys that have just gone through assessment with an experienced church planner in Acts 29. And so it's no more like, hey, go through assessment and then check back when you're done with the recommendations. It's you go and then you you are walked through that season of finishing those things and launching and we're seeing a ton of fruit mm. with that stuff so it seems like you've uh flipped some of the narrative uh i think you said recruitment training assessment like yep. i don't think that historically we'd have thought a training before assessment yep. what what's going on there yeah so some of it was just the work that i've done globally for the last decade and what's happening around the rest of the world or has been happening around the rest of the world was they they couldn't just assume well-qualified church planners were going to show up to assessment. Yeah. They they owned much of the much of the rest of the world was owning this is on us to develop church planners to even get them to the point where they can be assessed. And so really it was an opportunity for 
us in the United States to learn from the rest of the world mm. and to say, okay, if if we're heading that way, like if we're heading, if our context is getting more and more secular and it's looking like the rest of the world, then what can we learn from the rest of the world? And that piece of putting training before assessment yeah. um, seems to be more and more critical and more and more needed. So one of the things we, two things we're doing in training is uh, we just developed an apprenticeship, which I'm super excited about the apprenticeship. I'll talk about that in a second. And we're about to start working on a residency program. And both of those are things that we can offer potential church planners and Acts 29 churches. And so the apprenticeship is that guy. If any of you guys, anybody raises up somebody and just goes, I think they might have it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The the point of the apprenticeship is to help you and that potential church planner discern their sense of calling. Mm -hmm. It's not to train them. It's just that first step of, Am I called to church planning? So they get a, it's a kind of a six module to be done in about six months. It tracks with all the core competencies, gives them exposure to church planners. It's supposed to do it in their church, but we deliver it online. And um, we think that's going to help give somewhere, shorten that step from like, maybe I have it to, can I go to assessment? And you know why this is so important and valuable is because there was a time when it felt almost like church planners were 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 popping up everywhere. Right. You know, when you look back at maybe the early two thousands, there were church planners all over the place, and people are really interested in planting churches. We don't find ourselves in twenty twenty four in that same situation, and so rather than waiting around for someone to deliver us leaders who were already developed, we're saying, you know what, we've got to identify potential church That's planners, it. recruit those church planners, train them do apprenticeships, which you're going to talk about with yeah. them. And so that's a big, you know, as we as we sort of turn the corner from into the next 25 years, a big part of our growth plan and strategy is going to be recruiting and training church planners, not hoping they show up and come to us. Yeah, it's yeah. just not to presume on the Lord. Well, and it also is what, a big part of what integrates your world, my world, Tyler's that's world, it. is now it's not just, okay, well, our local churches, hopefully they're surfacing guys, but we're going, no, we need you to help us surface guys. We still have to surface them, disciple them, train them, but we're collaborating together yep. to get that done. Yep. And so that's, again, like just such a great example of like, we're doing stuff that X29 has never done before. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's always just been, well, I hope somebody else applies. <laughs> and and they have, like really good people have do. applied. Yeah. They still do. Yeah. But if we're going to get ahead of this thing and still be relevant 25 years from now, which I think has to be the goal, this is the stuff that'll get us there. And and to piggyback on the things that we've never done before, I, I can't remember sitting in assessments and assessing guys and, and talking about calling. And you could tell their wife and, and him just kind of went blank on that, you know? Right. And they, they had no ability to think about calling. We talked about calling a lot, but there's, you know, where do you go in scripture even for it? And for you to be able to give a package, a tool online to walk with a, a person in your church yeah. that's coaching you and have them assess their calling for six months. I mean, that that's really significant. Yeah, so we're going to start rolling out. I mean, we'll put link in the show notes and all that. And you should, if you're anyway connected to Acts 29 through the website and social media and all those ways, you'll start seeing all that stuff pump out. But yeah, like you said, here's a tool that we want to put in the hands of the regional directors, sub-regional directors, areas, local churches, where they can tweak it if they want to tweak it to their local context, or they can just take it and run it. And we're going to deliver it online through the equip platform that we've had. Um, it's free to use it. And we just feel like it's a way to surface guys and, and then give them shorten that step. Mm-hmm. Right. So to say, Hey, you're identified and then the apprenticeship, and then we're going to be working on a residency that, that is designed to train church planners. Mm-hmm. And again, to be delivered in our churches, put a tool in their hand mm-hmm. Give them trellis on which the vine can grow on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, anything else you guys want to talk about going on? Anything you're, else you're excited about, looking forward to? Yeah, I'll say one thing. You know, um, we're here together really planning what the next 25 years looks mm-hmm. like. And, you know, we had a really robust conversation yesterday and today, really dialoguing through it's time for us to begin to grow. 
You know, so we've had seasons of growth in Acts 29. We've had seasons of consolidation. We've never really stopped growing in the sense of we've always continued to plant churches. But four years after COVID, as we sit here today, when I say after COVID, I mean after the beginnings of COVID, which, you know, shut down churches, some for a few weeks and some for a year, depending (laughs) on where you were in the world at that point. But four years after COVID, we're really starting to see like it's time for us to, and we are growing, but, but we, we want to see people saved in our churches. We want to see people baptized. We had 7,700 ish. I don't have the exact statistic, but it's right around that number. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who converted to Christ in our churches last year. And so we're this fall as we focus on where are we headed next? We see ourselves growing through existing churches joining us because they, they're they theologically aligned. They want to be in relationship, and maybe they want to be in a cohort with other churches in their same life stage uh, because they care about church multiplication, because they care about uh, being more effective as a local church. And so I think the next our future is really about growth. It's about conversion growth in our churches. It's about people being baptized. It's about us in a declining um, Christian context, at least in the U.S., it's about us saying, no, we'll continue to be missionally effective or missionally committed, yeah. and by God's grace, missionally effective in our communities, and we will continue to plant more churches and grow as Acts 29. So I think what you're going to see going forward from us, and when I say us, I mean all of us together, Justin talked about that earlier, from the organization, from the network, as we collectively press into this, we're excited to grow going forward. Yeah. And I think we see that almost everywhere in the network. You know, sometimes as leaders, we get up front and we cast vision and we make it hopeful and we, we, we point the direction, but it's not happening yet. And I think what, what Brian's suggesting is we're, we're, we're seeing that already and we're just pointing to it. You know, we, we are moving, we are growing. This vision has got traction in many ways. So, um, I was on a phone call with Justin's team maybe two months ago. I think you might experience a similar thing with all the SRDs and the RDs, and um, they're charged up, they're aligned, uh, they're enjoying each other, they're they're talking about how they're planting churches together. And uh, I, I've been on calls in the last four or five years with that group that it's been it's been difficult. It's not that way anymore, you know. Yeah. Like we we are moving forward and we're growing. And I had a, a Zoom call with a lot of my hub church guys and their teams, uh, about fifty people. And it was a very similar feel, you know, as guys tell stories about what the Lord's doing and you get to a question and answer time. And it used to be, you know, 45 minutes of very hard questions, which was important, but now it's, uh, what are we doing and how, how can, how can my church be a part of that? So I, I'm, I'm super excited about that. I get that. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And just the other day I was with our, the Acts 29 board. We have a new board that we've assembled some, some members that were on it and then several new members. And we were discussing with Matt Chandler, our executive chairman, just the other day, what's happening in the village church and what he's seeing in ministry. And he said to us, and this was affirmed in different sections of the country also, that God's really doing a work among Gen Z, yeah. among folks in that Gen Z under 28 years old right now. And so I think we, we as we sit here, and all of us are in leadership in Acts 29, we feel not only optimistic, but hopeful and when you think of the the way the Bible sees hope, it's like it's it's based on a guaranteed future. Hope is based on promise. It's not a it's not a dream. It's not like, well, I hope this will happen. We are we are hopeful based on God's work that God's gonna do an amazing work among Generation Alpha and Gen Z and 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 I'm just out of millennials, Gen X, you know, as we are reaching people in our churches. Yeah, I I mean Hardly a week goes by that I'm not getting texts from somebody talking about what's going on in their church plant, specifically around like these people came to faith or we're baptized, we're having a baptisms this Sunday or what. And that's increasingly becoming the norm of what's coming to me. And that's super exciting for me because I'm, I love the church, but I love the church because that's the way. God said, here's how I'm going to draw people mm-hmm. to myself. Yeah. And so it's not just that we just want more churches. We want more churches because this was God's plan 
mm-hmm. to reach people and bring them into a re- saving relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. And we're seeing it yeah. all yeah. the time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think by nature, church planners are ambitious and missional, and which has made just the last couple of years miserable. You know, as it's just been so much sideways movement and figuring out cameras and how to do online stuff. And it's just been such a terrible last couple of years. And so we're we're back in this place where we get to go forward again. And I always joke, church planners are like God. We create ex nihilo, right? We're creating something out of nothing. That's who we are. We want to create things. And so us being able to start to turn the ship a little bit and go, let's go. Like, let's go, let's go take some ground. Let's go do some stuff. Let's plant some churches. Let's create something out of nothing. I think just charges everybody up. So it's good to be out of that phase and into a new one. Yeah, because they all have all that kinetic energy and it's going somewhere. And when we're not moving forward and we're not planting churches, it's eating each other alive. I kind of, we went through that. Now now we're putting it towards making much of Jesus and advancing the kingdom. Not good for us. Yeah, I'm. I'm so excited about the future of where this thing is going, especially under your leadership. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for that, yeah. for the vision and direction that you've given us. And I would just yeah. say, if if you're listening to this thing, watching this thing, and you're either an existing church that wants to plant churches, come on. And you want to plant churches because you want to reach people and make disciples of the nations, come on. And if you're a church planner or think you might be a church planner, come on, let's go, jump in. We'll We'll help you. Mm-hmm figure out how to do this thing, get yep. you connected, get you trained, get yep. you going. Yep. Right on. Yeah. So, hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate you taking yeah, time thanks, out and uh, look forward. We're going to do this maybe a handful of times, a couple times a year so that folks can just know what's going on, what's been going on, what's happening, know who to contact, all that sort of thing. So, look forward to getting back together on this. That's great. That's great. All right. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Acts 29 podcast. If you want to connect with X29 or find out more about planting a church with X29, you can go to x29.com. Go ahead and hit like on the podcast and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks again for joining us.